DaVinci Resolve 20 Beta 1 has been out for a few days and I've spent several hours tinkering with Magic Mask 2.0. So in today's video, we're gonna go through it. I'm gonna explain some of the gotchas I found, a couple of bugs along the way, and a way to get back to the legacy Magic Mask, if that's gonna work better for you. So welcome back to Creator Reality. I hope you enjoy this video. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you what we're working with. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve and you'll see that I'm running the Studio 20 Beta and I've got a couple of test clips on my timeline to play with. And you'll notice that this sweatshirt doesn't have a lot of contrast with the road behind it. And here, my motorcycle jacket is just about the same color as some of this road. So that's gonna wreak havoc with Magic Mask. It always has. So we're gonna test and see if it's any better. One of the things while I've got your attention, Magic Mask is really dependent on having separation between the foreground or the subject and the background. And I don't mean just blurry versus sharp. I mean, the actual colors are important. I have found over the years that this is the biggest problem Magic Mask has with tracking. So let's get into it and I'll show you what I mean. I've got my clip here and I want my hand visible, right? Like right about there. Depending on which frame you select, Magic Mask 2.0 will do a better or worse job. Hopefully I've picked a good one here. So before we get started, we're gonna click on our clip. I'm gonna hold Alt and click on it to select just the video, and then I'm gonna let go of Alt, hold it again, and click and drag up to make a duplicate. Now we're gonna work on this top one, which leaves our bottom one unaffected. If I go to Effects and Filters, drag a lens blur onto the bottom one, then if I disable this with the D key, you'll see the whole frame is blurry, and now it's not blurry, it's sharp, because we're looking at the top clip. This is just a way to see how well the mask is working. So with that clip selected and we're on the frame I want, I'm gonna click on the color tab icon. Now we're in the color tab. First thing we need to do is right click in the blank space, add alpha output that creates the blue dot and then we'll connect to it from the blue output and that way our transparency is set up for our clip. Now we're in AI Magic Mask 2. If you're over here or over there, just click on the little person in a window, there it is. And if you've watched any of my other tutorials, I like to do iterations around 10 and switch to better quality. Now, you're supposed to be able to just click and put a dot somewhere and it picks out what you're masking. So I'm gonna click on my forehead because I'm a person. And you'll see that because I have my mask overlay toggled on, if I toggle it off, my face is sharp, everything else is blurry. But while we're setting this up, I find it really important to have that mask overlay on, it puts everything kind of in a red hue that it's picking up and it's masking. So the next thing we need to do is make sure that Resolve catches everything and it's gonna be really laggy right now and it's not gonna pick up everything. But if you give it a few seconds, it will catch up. And there it is, it has masked everything. And then if I toggle my overlay off, you can see that it's picking up everything really well, that's good. So we'll toggle it back on. And then you can come over here and you could track one frame backwards, track reverse all the way to the start of our clip. Helpful if you're in the middle like we are. You can track both directions, forward or forward one frame. I'm just gonna click on track forward and reverse and DaVinci Resolve is going to track it. We're getting about 21 frames, 22 frames. That's not bad. And this is all dependent upon the speed of your computer but it's done now. And then we can scrub through and see how good of a job it did. And it looks like it's doing a fantastic job once we actually just figured out that we need to have a whole bunch of dots there. Now let's go back to the edit page and take a look at our finished result. So here we are, I can play it back. It plays back smoothly and it's done a really good job of masking everything out. That was a pretty easy clip, right? Now, let's go do a slightly more difficult one. So we're over here on this clip, and I know that there's a camera bag right over here behind me, and Magic Mask is gonna pick up on that. So I'm gonna pick a frame that shows it, and I'm gonna make a duplicate again, and I can disable the background one or add in a lens blur. And then I'm gonna click on my clip, click the color tab, do the same setup, and then we're in Magic Mask, and we're going to select Better, change our iterations, put a dot on me, 
and see what it picks up. My face, and then my hat, and then maybe my sweatshirt. Nope, it picked up my hand from that one. Maybe now it'll pick up the sweatshirt. There it goes. And I'm gonna add a few more just for good measure and let DaVinci Resolve think for a minute. And now we should be pretty good. If I zoom in, we know this camera bag is a pretty close match of the gray. So it's over here. We can actually use the minus or the subtract click and click on that right there. And that should pick up the colors from it. I'm gonna add another one that's even closer in color to my sweatshirt. Press Z to zoom to fit. And now I'm gonna track it with the overlay on. We got a little bit higher this time, 25 frames per second. Ooh, fancy speed. Now I'll toggle the overlay off and we'll see what it picked up. Look at that. It's looking pretty good all the way through. Except for right about there. There's a frame that it didn't pick up. So let's mouse wheel zoom in and it left this bit of the camera bag. So now here's where these come in handy. We don't need the paintbrush plus, but the paintbrush minus will come in handy and you can drop down here to select a size and you'll see the green circle get bigger and smaller or you can hold control and left mouse click and drag up and down, left and right, and it'll change the size. We want it about that big because we want to cut out right here and right there and right there. And now we've got a pretty good mask. If I use my mouse wheel and kind of move around a little bit and drag, you can see that we've got a pretty good edge and using the lens blur actually shows us pretty well where the edges are. If you don't want to do that, we can come back to the edit page, move the original clip out. We can go to generators, scroll down to solid color, and then we'll give it a real contrasty color. We'll change it from black to like a light blue. Click OK, go back into the color page. It'll automatically select our clip. And you can see that, oh, look what I missed. It didn't grab that thing, right? So if I come back to my reference frame and I zoom out, I'm going to need the plus click again. We can click right there and we can click right here and it hasn't done any tracking or got rid of our tracking rather. So we're going to retrack it. Now, while that tracks, I will tell you the biggest gotcha with Magic Mask 2.0 is that after a while, and in my case, it's about a half an hour, Magic Mask forgets what to do. It just absolutely stops working. It won't show you the reference frame clicks. It won't track. It just kind of forgets what it's supposed to do. So I find it best to exit resolve and come back in. But again, this is the beta version. So if you're watching this after the final release is out, then it probably works better. I expect Blackmagic Design will fix this in a future version. Tracking is done. So Z to fit and it picked up something in this frame. So I'm gonna come back in and grab my minus and just delete that little bit there. And notice that using the minus and plus do not reset the tracking, but I'll zoom to fit again and then we can scrub through the footage and it's not picking up, it's not picking up that stogie. So I can fix that by going to the first frame where it forgot what it's doing. Well, we're gonna ignore the that little shadow there and then right, Right about here, there. So we're gonna add a plus, we'll add a dot. And then you'll see that just back here is red. So we'll track back real quick. And it's doing a pretty good job, but it's not perfect. Now, if we wanted to make it a little more perfect, or if this isn't working for you, we can go into the legacy magic mask. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna right click on my node and reset node grade to get rid of the magic mask. And I'm gonna come over to the three dots here and come all the way down, you see Legacy Object Mask. Now we're in AI Magic Mask Object. You can select Person, and you have Plus and Minus, but you don't have the paint brushes. We're gonna select Better, bump our iterations up, and this is the line version that I've shown in previous tutorials where drawing on oneself is okay. Not since you were a kindergartner was that okay. And you'll see Already, there's a difference between Magic Mask 1 and 2 because it picked up all this extra stuff. So I'm gonna grab my minus and just draw around all this and then track it. And you'll see how much faster it tracks, almost twice as fast the tracking on the original Magic Mask. That's kind of nuts, but hey, the AI Magic Mask 2.0 is doing more.
So you can see it got the camera bag and then it got some other stuff. Like it doesn't like the shadows and you can try to clean black and clean white, but I've never had real good luck with all that. It creates the weird feathering on the edges there. So in, in a case like this, I find it better just to clean it out and start anew. You just gotta find the right frame and I found a bad one in that clip. So that's Magic Mask 2.0. Again, if you're watching this in the future, it's probably improved and I'll do another video on it. But I wanted to get this quick preview out because I think it's really helpful. I think it's really cool. I do think it's improved, just not in all areas. I find the paint to be very helpful, um, but the clicks aren't as helpful because it's faster for me to draw a line. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, boop the like button. Leave me a comment below. Are you going to be using this feature? Have you used it? Are you an early adopter like me? And let me know if you have any questions. Until next time, go check out this video that YouTube has curated for you from my catalog, and I'll see you in the next video.